This video is a no BS beginner's guide on camera settings for shooting video. Roll the intro. So we're going to go over the best camera settings for shooting video. These settings include frame rate, shutter speed, white balance, and audio levels. Now before we begin, I just want to point out that putting your camera into manual mode will enable you to set the following settings to your choosing, as opposed to having the camera decide for you in any of the auto settings. And if you want to know exactly what gear I use, I have a full list in the description box below. And if you missed the first two videos of this series for beginners, you could click the card right up here. Let's begin. Frame rate is the frequency at which frames in a video sequence are displayed. So this video you're watching right now has a frame rate of 24 frames per second. That means 24 images are being displayed over the course of one second for every second that you watch. And obviously the more seconds you have, the longer you could watch for and eventually you have a full video. Now your camera should have multiple options for frame rates. Most DSLR and mirrorless cameras have 24, 30, 60, and up to 120 frames per second. Now I choose to shoot 24 frames per second because that is the cinema standard for motion picture. It's this preferred frame rate that makes featured movies and TV shows look like movies and TV shows. Unlike if you were to watch a sporting event like a football or basketball game, or even something like a news broadcast, you'll notice that this footage looks much different. This type of footage is shot with a higher frame rate. The advantage of higher frame rates is that motion appears to be smoother, and details are more crisp because of the decreased motion blur. Live events like sports or breaking news may have a lot of unplanned camera movement, so it's useful to shoot at a higher frame rate to capture everything that's going on without losing detail to any motion blur. Another commonly used advantage of higher frame rates is the option to spread out those frames over a longer period of time for slow motion playback. Now we can't talk about frame rates without mentioning shutter speed for video. The rule of thumb for video is to set your shutter speed at double your frame rate. So if I'm shooting 24 frames per second, my shutter speed has to be 1 48th of a second. 30 frames per second needs a shutter speed of 1 60th of a second. And 60 frames per second needs a shutter speed of 1 1 20th of a second. You get the idea. In the first video of this series for beginners, we talked about how shutter speed affects motion blur. This double frame rate shutter speed rule is really what's known as the the 180 degree shutter angle rule, and all this really means is that the shutter will remain open long enough to allow a certain amount of motion blur for each frame. And it's this amount of motion blur that's accepted as the industry norm for video. It's also said this motion blur closely resembles what our eyes see in real life, thus making it the most natural looking. And this explains why higher frame rates can preserve crisper details, because the faster shutter speed doesn't allow much motion blur. White balance is when the camera removes any unrealistic color cast, so that way anything that's supposed to be white looks white in camera. With regard to lighting, colors can shift from cool color temperatures to warm color temperatures depending on the light source. You should be able to tell which end of the color temperature spectrum your image is leaning towards. Your white balance setting should have different options for different light sources. Selecting the one for your lighting situation will remove the unwanted color cast and you should have accurate colors. Now chances are it won't be perfect colors but it will be close enough where a few adjustments in post can clean it up. The best way to get accurate colors is to use a white balance card or a color checker like this. If you plan on recording audio of whatever it is you're filming, I first suggest that you get an external microphone. On-camera mics are usually very terrible. The next thing you want to do is make sure your audio levels don't peak. When you set your camera to movie mode, you'll see some audio bars on the screen. And as your microphone picks up audio, you'll see the bars rise to a certain level. Your goal is to have your audio not reach too far into the red zone because then that's when it peaks and audio becomes distorted. Use your audio settings to manually adjust the recording level, so that way your audio falls in that green safe zone. You can always increase or decrease the volume of good captured audio, but peaked audio you really can't fix in post. If you wanna continue learning about how to use your camera for videos, here's what you could do. In these two videos, I teach you some creative budget-friendly shots so you could add some flair to your videos. If you click here, you could subscribe to my channel and be updated every time I post a new video. Thank you so much for watching. This is Kevin Mendoza. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.